Welcome to my place. This week it's in the garden and look at my pear tree. It is willing me to make a pear relish. Look at them, they're so plump and ripe. Actually, that's a lie. They could probably have done with being on this tree for just a little bit longer, but I just thought, look, I've got the time now, I might as well do it. If you've got pears on your tree at home and maybe some of them have fallen onto the ground, don't worry, just pick them up and we'll use them as well. That's called windfall. But these are just fabulous. Oops, we don't really need that. Right. Here we are back inside. I have cut most of the pears. You need about 1.5 to 2 kgs. This is what I do. I just cut it through there, slice it down through there, and slice it through there. That little bit there, I always get rid of that because I don't want to eat a fairy thing. Would you like a fairy thing in your mouth? Because I wouldn't. And then these just get chopped up into even sized bits. Don't worry about the seeds. And if you're worried at all about whether a fruit is ripe or not, just look at the little pips. The pips will be your indicator as to whether it is ripe. And if they're black, ready to go. So slice that up. And this one here, just shove those into there. Now, before I was, when we were outside, I was talking about windfall. This is what I mean by windfall. See that bl that brown yucky bit there? That's where it's hit the ground and it's been sitting on the ground for quite some time. All you need to do is to slice that through there and discard that bit, because we don't want to be eating that. That's not pleasant at all. And then just slice that in. And it's better if the, the fruit is ripe. But unfortunately, in this garden, my garden that is, I have coddling moth. And when I think I've got rid of it, it is there waiting for me. And it tunnels right into the fruit. And what happens is it gets in this little, wee, this little soft bit here and it funnels its way in and it just causes the worst kind of rot that's just disgusting. Okay, let's get rid of those. Usually I would compost and I will compost later on. Right, into here we've got a couple of onions. I've got red onions and I've got some brown onions. They go into there. Two to three, three to four, you decide how many you want to put into there. Get rid of that. Right, a good handful of raisins, a good handful of currants go into there. In fact, that's a good two. And then quite a bit of sugar, about three cups of sugar. And then we, I'll get rid of those as well while I'm on the go. We don't need those. Now I've got four or five cloves of garlic. You decide how many you want. Shove that into there as well. And then we get to our spices. Now I've got some yellow mustard. I have got some ground ginger. I've got some crystallized ginger, a good tablespoon or two of salt. And then I've got some cayenne pepper because I like a good bit of bite. That goes into there like so. Oops. Looks like I've got a big bench, but when I've got big plates, I don't really have enough room at all. Right, the other thing that I like to put into here is molasses because I love that beautiful blackness that you get from using that. Turn that around like that. That's one or two tablespoons, but the recipe is on our website. And the next thing that has to go into here is some vinegar, lots of vinegar. Malt vinegar is a good thing to use, or you could use cider vinegar. But when it comes to cider vinegar, I actually prefer that with apples. And I've also got a little bit of balsamic vinegar here. That can go into there as well. I know it's a little bit expensive, but it does make my relishes or my chutneys taste very, very nice. Right, this goes onto the stove and it go, you need to stir it until it comes to the boil, then reduce it until it goes to a gentle, gentle simmer. It's going to take between one and a half to two, sometimes two and a half hours, depending on how ripe the fruit is. Right, that can just go onto there. And before I go too far, I'll just give that a little wee stir to just make sure that there is enough fluid and that's all completely been mixed and mixed together. Right, with the magic of my busyness this afternoon, I've actually done one previously and I'll just get rid of all of this and I want you to have a look to see what this looks like. Right, so can you have a look at that? Can you see that there, how that's all beautiful and thick? 
and oh goodness me that's a lot of vinegar in there the other thing is and if you can hear a cat crying that's my tilly she so wants to be a movie queen and you can just go away we're far too busy for you tilly but this here needs to be lovely lovely and lovely and thick in fact i'll just turn that around there it's beautiful and thick and once you've got it to that stage you then need to add a good ounce of citric acid and this is also another preservative so that just gets ground into there like so and then make sure it's all mixed in and that is ready for putting into very clean jars which I will show you how to do in a few moments see you later